Welcome back to the discussion of Chapter 2, Cell Structures and Functions, and in this video, we are going to be focusing on subtopic 2.4, Transport Across Plasma Membrane. These are the learning objectives that you need to complete at the end of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to make an overview of the various transport mechanisms across the membrane. Students should also be able to explain the various transport mechanisms across the membrane. These includes passive transport and active transport. There are two types of transport across membrane. These are passive transport and active transport. Passive transport refers to the transport of substances across plasma membrane down the substance concentration gradient without using energy. However, active transport refers to the transport of substances across plasma membrane against the substance concentration gradient by using energy. There are three types of passive transport. These are simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and also osmosis. In active transport, you will learn about sodium potassium pump and also bulk transport. But for now, let's focus on passive transport first. The first type of passive transport is known as simple diffusion. When writing down the definition of simple division, we always need to begin here. Simple division refers to the transport of substances across plasma membrane down the substance concentration gradient without using energy directly via the plasma membrane, as you can see in the diagram here. This substance directly crossed the plasma membrane from the extracellular fluid into the cytoplasm. Only certain substances with certain characteristics can travel this way. This include, if the substance is non-polar, it becomes lipid-soluble. And since the plasma membrane is made up of phospholipid bilayer, that is why non-polar substances can simply cross the plasma membrane. Example of such substances includes steroid hormones like estrogen and testosterone. If the substance is very small in size, they can also travel this way. This includes water and gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. If the substance is too big or they are charged or polar molecules, they will require the help of transport protein to be transported across the plasma membrane. There are two types of transport proteins. We have the channel protein and also the carrier protein. Since the movement of these substances required facilitation by transport protein, hence this method of transport is known as facilitated diffusion. Example of substances transported across the plasma membrane via facilitated diffusion includes glucose, sodium ion, and chloride ion. The third type of passive transport is known as osmosis. Osmosis specifically look at the movement of water molecules across the plasma membrane. Since osmosis is a passive transport, so osmosis must refer to the movement of water from the region with a lot of water molecules to a region with less water molecules. The region with a lot of water molecules is known to have high water potential, and vice versa. Water potential refers to the tendency of water molecules in a solution to leave that solution in favor of another solution. It is inversely proportional to osmotic pressure, which refers to the tendency of a solution to suck in water from another area. So there are several ways in defining osmosis. Firstly, you can define osmosis by using concentration as the main subject. First and foremost, you can define osmosis by using the concentration of water molecules, like this. Osmosis refers to the transport of water molecule across a semi-permeable membrane from a region of high water concentration to low water concentration 
without using energy. Or you can define osmosis by comparing the solution's concentration, like this. Osmosis refers to the transport of water molecules across a semi-permeable membrane from a less concentrated solution, because less concentrated solution have more water, to a more concentrated solution, because concentrated solution have less water, without using energy. Or, since we have learned about the concept of water potential, we can also define osmosis by comparing water potential, like this. Osmosis refers to the transport of water molecules across a semi-permeable membrane from a region of high water potential to low water potential without using energy. So those are different ways of how you can define osmosis. The ability to calculate water potential of a particular solution will give you ability to predict water movement. Water potential, often represented by psi, is equal to solid potential plus pressure potential. Let's have a look at the following exercise. This is a plant cell immersed in a solution with water potential of negative 1,400 kilopascal. These are the given values for the cell. Let's answer the question. Calculate the water potential of the plant cell. Writing down the formula often give you one mark. The solid potential of the cell is negative 750 kilopascal plus the pressure potential of the plant cell, which is 340 kilopascal, giving you the final answer of negative 410 kilopascal. It is very important for you to write down the unit. The second question. State whether water will enter or leave the cell. Since now we know that the water potential inside the cell is negative 410, we can compare the water potential inside the cell and the water potential of the solution. Negative 410 kilopascal is a much bigger value compared to negative 1400 kilopascal. Since we know that water will always move from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential, so we can say that water molecules will leave the cell via osmosis, causing the cell to be plasmalized. It is important for the students to know that pure water has the highest water potential with psi equals to zero. In pure water, without any solutes, all the water molecules are free. The water potential of a cell will always be at a negative value. This is because cells contain solute. As more and more solutes are added to a solution, more and more water will be held in hydration shell, thus reducing the number of free water molecules. Now, let's take a look at active transport. Active transport is the movement of substances across a semi-permeable membrane against the substance's concentration gradient with energy. There are two types of active transport that you will learn. These include the sodium-potassium pump and bulk transport. In some cells, such as the neurons, they will spend energy in the form of ATP to activate sodium-potassium pump and pump three sodium ion out and two potassium ion into the cell. Like this, the cell will use ATP to transport three sodium ion out and two potassium ion in. This is a more detailed explanation of what's happening. Firstly, the sodium potassium pump is open to the cytoplasmic side of the cell. This is its original conformation. And in this original conformation, the sodium potassium pump has higher affinity towards sodium ions. So therefore, three sodium ions bind to the pump. Binding of sodium ions stimulates the phosphorylation of this pump by ATP. This causes the pump to change its conformation and become open to the extracellular matrix side. In this conformation, the pump has lower affinity towards sodium ion, thus releasing the sodium ion outside of the cell. However, in this conformation, the pump has higher affinity towards potassium ion, 
leading to the binding of two potassium ion to the pump. Binding of potassium ion to the pump stimulates the release of the phosphate group from the pump, causing the pump to return back to its original conformation. And in this conformation, the pump has low affinity towards potassium ion, causing the potassium ion to be released inside the cell. The pump is now ready to bind with more sodium ions. This cycle will continue as long there is energy in the form of ATP to be spent on the pump. Next, we have bulk transport. There are two types of bulk transport. These are endocytosis, which refers to the transport of substances into the cell, and exocytosis, which refers to the transport of substances out of the cell. There are two types of endocytosis. These are phagocytosis and pinocytosis. As you can see from the diagram, Phagocytosis is when the cell takes up solid substances. Meanwhile, pinocytosis refers to when the cell takes up solutes from its surroundings. The solid substance taken up via phagocytosis will be trapped inside a vacuole, or specifically food vacuole, or can also be called as phagosome. Meanwhile, solutes that is taken up via pinocytosis will be trapped inside vesicle. Since the solid substances taken up via phagocytosis needs to be digested before being absorbed, as mentioned here, phagocytosis often will involve the lysosome. However, pinocytosis will not involve the lysosome. This is because the solutes taken up via pinocytosis will directly be absorbed into the cell. Now, let's take a look at this question. This question is one of the questions that has been asked in the examination in the past. Figure 6 shows the movement of molecules across the membrane. We have process M and process N. Name the process M and process N. Process M involved the take-up of solid material. Meanwhile, process N involved the take-up of dissolved solutes. So we can quickly answer that process M is phagocytosis and process N is pinocytosis. Give two differences between process M and process N. This is what we have learned earlier on. It is important for the students to know that you are not allowed to answer comparison questions by using a table. You need to write a full sentence and make a clear comparative sentences. You can ensure this by using words such as meanwhile, but, however. For example, process M is when the cell takes up solid substances, meanwhile, but, however. Process N is when the cell takes up solutes. Since there are two marks here, you should give two differences. Now, state the function of organelles A, B, and C. Let's recognize what is represented by organelle A, B, and C. Organelle A is the Golgi body. Organelle B is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And organelle C is the mitochondria. We know that the Golgi body receive, modify, sort, package, and transport proteins received from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum acts as the site of protein synthesis, and mitochondria is the site of cellular respiration. For question D, can a plant cell undergo endocytosis? State your reason. Plant cell cannot undergo endocytosis. This is due to the presence of rigid cell wall. Question E, what will happen to D after it enters into the cell? We know that in phagocytosis, the solid material will be trapped inside a food vacuole and then fused with lysosome to be digested and then absorbed. Phagolysosome refers to the food vacuole or phagosome that has fused with the lysosome.